Hey guys, all right, let's, ooh, that's probably a lot, sorry about that. All right, let's take a look at designing and building your banner ads. Now, what you have in front of you here is the system that we use to monitor banner ad and advertising activity across the globe. Uh, right now, I'm going, going to only focus on United States activity. Obviously, if you want, we can look in the other areas. I'm only gonna look at US for the um, intention of this video, okay? I am choosing currently the third, the last 30 days to look at the banners that are hot and to share why they're hot and to share why some uh, that may appear to be hot, you should just completely avoid. This is very important, um, avoiding things that look hot but actually uh, can get you in trouble. Uh, and then I'm going to look at the network Google. Now, if I choose all networks, we're going to get a pretty huge... Uh, diversity of ads that you probably won't be able to use uh, across the board and they'll get you and your advertising accounts in trouble. So we're going to just stick with Google for right now. We're going to look at all ad types, all ad sizes. Okay, so what you see here is I have the ad spend for the last, or the ads, the top ads for the last 30 days sorted by their ad spend with the largest budget to the smallest budget. Now we can come in and you mouse over any of the ads and we can see exactly what that ad is. You see here we've got 300 by 250 that was run on the Google network, about 2 million in ad spend, um, and uh, a pretty straightforward, simple banner. Um, obviously H&R Block is dropping a crap load of money right now because it's tax season and that doesn't really that, that doesn't really mean anything to you but what i can show you and pull away from this are the important elements that you're going to need to include for your banner ad and we can even use this one i know that's a branding type of ad but uh it, it, this is an effective ad actually um and if you look here this is the one that you really want to look at this is their trend so they had a lot of spend and they lowered it now it's coming back up again um the ad itself has many of the standard elements for an ad which are one headline here you have your headline here file for free you know, a lot of times you have your headline at the top in this case they're putting their logo or their brand at the very top instead of uh, the headline first pretty cool uh, so you again you have your headline you have what's called your body copy they don't have any real body copy here uh, and, or bullet points they don't have either of those but they have a nice product image uh, or not product image, excuse me. I mean, they're, they're painting the, what's called the future vision image picture of someone utilizing the software. So I'm looking at this ad, I think, oh, I can do it from my computer. Or wow, I can do it from my phone. Even if I never ever use my phone, they have created a mental picture for me that I might want to end up using my phone. So one of the most important elements for your ad is future vision image if you're selling a product. Now there's a couple different ways we talked about before uh, for creating your offer. And obviously, if you're doing a direct marketing pr uh, attempt, if you're doing any sort of uh, um, you know, uh, shock and awe type of ad, this would be different. You don't you do use feature vision image for shock and awe. You use something completely different. I'll show you that in just a moment. But so again, we have headline, body copy. Body copy is absent on this ad. Bullet points. Bullet points are missing on this ad. The disclaimer here, uh, or, and then the call to action. Um, Sometimes the disclaimer is put underneath the button. In this case, they have it here because they have done what we talk about, talked about in CPA Tsunami and been talking about for years. Use the disclaimer as a benefit. Simple federal returns, which is the disclaimer, free to prepare, print, and e-file. So you're looking at that going, wow, I thought that was going to be a, some sort of hack hook. It's not. I get to do it for free. So uh, they're using their disclaimer as a benefit. Fantastic job. File online today. Strong call to action, right? So that's the, again, that's the important elements of a banner. Headline, uh, in, this, in many cases, a subheadline. You could look at this and say, this is a headline, this is a subhead. That's how it would be formatted. There's a product image. Here would be the bullets if you wanted to include them, your uh, disclaimer, and your call to action, okay? And of course, your brand. You gotta make sure that your banner, uh, if possible, has your brand in it. There are people who won't do that, uh, but um, I don't recommend that. I do recommend that all of your banners have your brand image in there for all of your future sales for your company. Now, you'll notice here that right underneath H&R uh, Block is live sale research. Now, that's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> there's no other way to say that. Why was this video planned? So for one, they have uh, fake functionality 
they're making this look like this was a, a, a YouTube video that you could watch. They're, at, they're using sex to sell in this ad. I mean, I'm assuming that this is sexual because there's a booty and there's a pole here. And um, I'm, I'm assuming this has something to do with some sort of um, dancing type of thing. Uh, your last chance to watch it. Now, they spent a crap load of money before what happened, before they got this ad banned and probably end up putting their account in jeopardy. If you look here, you can see that it ran for a while. So you may be sitting there thinking, oh man, I wanna, I see that banner everywhere. Let's make one just like it. Well, that's a surefire way to follow these guys into the, into the hoose cow and prevent yourself from ever advertising again because the publishers won't like this type of banner. Uh, Google, the network, won't like this type of banner, and the customers, while you will get a visceral response, will not really like this type of banner also. But look what, the, look what they replaced it with. You can almost see this. Like they went here, like, okay, well, we'll tame it down a little tiny bit. The NR experiment. Controversial shocks society. That's just horrible. Okay, sorry. Had some f folks show up. So anyhow, you can see this one here. This one ran also for a little while and then shut off. Now, I don't know if the advertiser's off in general. I'd have to look a little more, but this is the kind of ad that uh, <laughs> you're going to get clicks, and you're going to get a lot of clicks uh, until you don't get any clicks anymore ever <laughs> because you pissed everybody off. So uh, I highly recommend do not attempt to copy these type of ads. You will see them. They will get you in serious trouble. So if you look at this one, this is another one of those hook-style ads. This one's a little bit better. You notice it's actually still running. This is where they're taking two ads and writing them to the same exact lander. This one, uh, I don't recommend doing this, but you notice the same thing. This is a, you, you've got your strong headline. You've got a pivotal image. That This one, they're using a curiosity hook, and then you have some body copy to get people to come in. Learn how it's used and actually reverse diabetes. Watch the groundbreaking video. So there's even the call to action right in there. You notice they're not using, though, false uh, video play buttons and stuff like that. So they'll have a much longer lifespan. And according to this, they spent uh, 800,000 on Google. So here's Harry's. Again, uh, branding right in the middle. Should an eight pack of blades cost $32? They're running a pivot, meaning they're, uh, they're uh, us versus them. Why is it $8? It should only be five bucks, so on and so forth. Their ad spends up by 254%. Um, they do pretty good. Now you'll see a lot of people talking about uh, article creation and uh, things like that. There are always times and places for everything. The one thing you need to be careful of is are you looking at a trend that's on its way up or on its way down or that trend that has stamina. In this case, this particular ad says the five minute blood sugar killer and it shows you know diabetes is a blood killer and it shows that there's a video and uh, you know, this, this ad, if you look at its trend line, looked like it was doing well and coming up, but then all of a sudden it's just dropped off again. So you have to make sure that you're monitoring all of your competitors' banner ads, and if you're going to be creating your own banner ads, you've got to be absolutely freaking certain that you're not copying something that was on the upswing but is now on the downswing where it, they've been shut off. I do recommend, if you're doing a competitive analysis or looking at banners, uh, look at your last 180 days, then look at your last 30 days to see what kind of trends you're seeing. You may look at a 180-day timeline or a larger timeline and think, oh, i got to be safe. This thing's been running for a year. Well, no. When you look at the, la the last 30 days, you may find that all of a sudden those ads are off. Look at this guy's come out of nowhere. Wayfair has come out and they've got this new ad, 463,000, 70% off everything in the home. They're spending a crap load of money and not going anywhere. This is a nice ad. They got good visual images of the products. They have a strong call to action here, 70% off everything. Shop now. Um, this ad probably does quite, quite well. Now, mind you, of course, they're selling physical products, but you get the point. Here's a uh, flash ad. You're not going to be able to compete with that, so don't even try. Free to play. Well, let's ignore that. You don't really need those. Those aren't going to help you out. But look at these. The Zoo Lilies are really popular, strong, 70% off coats. This is a very strong call to action, although this one is on the trend down, but that's because we're leaving the summer, so, or winter, excuse me, and going into summer. So these coats ads will end up going away, right? All right. And okay, you'll notice too, like here's another Zoo Lily ad. 
this one here, all shapes and sizes, got a good future vision. It's a very complimentary outfit. Uh, headline, here's the call, the call to action is shop now. They've got the branding. They've got uh, daily deals up to 70% off. I would call that almost even, a, that's a sub-headline here. Um, and then you've got these guys again, this kind of uh, crappy shock and awe approach, which as you can see, banned. <laughs> and no more. Uh, maybe the ad either A, didn't work, or they just got the notice. So I'm guessing they probably got the notice. This is usually how it works. Everybody thinks they're safe until they get the notice and then they're banned. Look, yeah, see, this is ridiculous. They, they were, yes, we'll run fine. Oh, I guess we're not going to run fine anymore. You can try and pull this kind of crap, but uh, you're pretty much just asking to not play ball for a while. You guys are probably looking at this one too. All these kind of ridiculous ads get a, a large amount of uh, views because the click-through ratio is so high and the algorithm will automatically place a lot of weight on click-through ratio. Um, but in the end, yeah, it's not good. Okay, so I added the keyword diet in here because we do have some folks who sell uh, diet-related products. Here is a uh, text ad. Here's an image ad, weight loss goal. Here, uh, let's see here. This flash ad, kind of a nasty looking flash ad in that window. I don't know why Applebee's is under diet, but yeah. Let's pick another category. Okay, and here's another one here. Uh, we'll look at these last few and then we'll uh, just kind of end this because we're already going over 10 minutes here. But uh, you notice here there's a concealed carry report. That's the headline. Uh, know your rights would be a subheadline. Call to action, get your, uh, this would actually be body copy, get your free concealed carry report, and then your instant access. I think what might be helpful for you guys would be for us to um, give you some of our uh, headline body copy uh, spreadsheet that you can end up using. So if you guys, uh, send your email address to graham at mmamt.com. He'll make sure you get it. And I'm not going to put it on this page because I don't want to give people who aren't going to take action the tools that we use. But if you've made it to this point in the video, you're obviously somebody who takes action. So send an email to graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at mmamt.com. And we'll get you over the full spreadsheet that we have that uh, is for basically entering your bullet points, body copy, and all that other stuff. Uh, and I'll even um, I'll even assist a few of you guys if you like and be able to create good headlines, body copy, bullet points, etc. for your offers. Uh, and then I'll, I'll actually, you know what, too, Graham, when these guys email, also send them, give them some of our old uh, old ads. I can't give you guys any of the client ads that we have now. We don't have like any clients who are comfortable with us sharing information. In fact, some of them are actually proactively suing people who steal their stuff because our clients are very effective. Um, <laughs> so let's give them some of the stuff that's non-client related so they can have some of those banners to be able to see what a, a sample banner would look like. Okay guys, um, I hope this is helpful for you. Uh, you can do this all yourself with Photoshop or you can hire this out through 99 Designs or any other place. The important part, have your stuff ready and then deliver to whoever is going to be making your banner for you an exact plan of what you want. Say, look, here's the stuff. I want you to find some images that match this. One of the key things, I should mention this before we are finished. One of the key things I've found is if I go into a, uh, into a um, image website like uh, uh, Big Stock Photo or any of those others, um, Shutterstock, I can actually go around, look at images, and I can come up with ads that will make the image that will, uh, I got, um, for that image. So in other words, if I see an image of something, um, a tree, I can say, oh, okay, I can make that tree look. So what I usually do is I'll load a whole bunch of images on a page, then I'll look and see which image stands out on the page to me, and whichever image stands out the most, I'll go look at that image, and then I'll say, okay, I gotta make an ad that centers around that particular image and that image's hook. When we used to do this a lot, we created, oh, I say when we used to do this a lot because um, I don't do this type of work personally anymore, but um, when we used to create images and banner ads a lot personally, uh, we created a whole um, 
created a whole methodology where we took an, uh, an overweight person and we, uh, they were a cartoon and we made them large and then skinny and large and skinny. And then we took actual before and after photos and used morphing software to morph them so we could show the actual effects of our product on actual customers. That worked so damn well. It was ridiculous. The problem is that it was so effective that we ended up getting uh, not banned, but told by Google and other publishers that we can't use it anymore because it was just too good. The people who saw the ads who were on the board of directors for those publishers did not like the fact that the, it really made people uh, feel uncomfortable if they were uncomfortable. You know, we, we hit those trigger points. So if you're going to hit a trigger point, be real careful with how hard you push it uh, and be aware that you need to be able to have some sort of diversity of your ads so that you don't um, end up getting banned because you're the guy that's always pushing the trigger. Have some diversity in the style of ads, have some diversity in the offer that you're presenting and be sure that your banners match and you have a good mix of very light and very strong banners, okay? All right, guys, we're at 15 minutes, so I hope this has helped you out. I'll look forward to talking with you all soon. Thanks, bye-bye.